And we kind of, we, we made fun of them before, so we might as well get to it. <laughs> did you guys see the Stephen E. Smith video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bring in all the trash personalities from hockey. Let's go. So, Stephen E. Smith. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm getting the audio for this ready. This is hilarious. I but love this so much. You know it's bad uh, when Stephen A. Smith is, is trashing you. Oh God, Stephen A. Smith. Oh, he's making fun of Kawhi. Overrated Kawhi. Um, Mick David. This is just, oh my God. Where is it? I can't find Okay, no, no, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Hold on a minute. So if you don't know who Stephen A. Smith is, um, ESPN. How? Important guy. Yeah, how do you know? How do you know here? So, Stephen A. Smith on the Edmonton Oilers getting swept in the first round. We all know. I'm and you can hear it right? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. We oh. all know I'm not a hockey expert, okay? The only thing I know about hockey is that the puck is black. <laughs> I heard that Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl. I've heard both of them. I've heard both of those guys. Connor McDavid, the phenom, the future of the sport, the NHL's leading scorer. Draisaitl, second in scoring to McDavid this year. The NHL's leading scorer last year. <laughs> Swept in the first round as the higher seed after not even getting out of the qualifying round last year. Now, how are you going to do hockey like that? <laughs> I love that. How are you going to do hockey? Like, swept in the first round after not getting out? Oh, my God. What's the best part about that, too, is Stephen A. in the background has a graphic that they've clearly put together for him. Since 2015-2016, the NHL point leaders. Third, Leon Dreisaitl, 497 points. Second, Patrick Kane, out of the way, 531. And Connie McDavid at 574 points. Was that his rookie year? No, it wasn't. Surely not. 15-16? Yeah, that was his rookie year. <laughs> that was a shorten year, yeah, like for him because he got injured. With a broken collarbone. Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. We'll start with game three, shall we? <laughs> this is even the worst part. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I, 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 guess, I guess we'll jump ahead to the 4 1. Uh, backwards, Daniel. Backwards. backwards. Backwards, okay. Game three against the Winnipeg Jets. It was a 4 1 lead. Where have we heard that before? And. Joss Archibald taking a huh. stupid penalty, which he was then suspended uh. for. Uh, uh, how happy were you, Alex, when you saw that? When I woke Let's, up the next morning, oh, I don't know what he was doing. Like he's he's going against Logan Stanley. It was like a foot over him, and it leads to an an, an avalanche of sorts. Four-one in the third period. I never want to hear. <laughs> A single 4-1 comment ever from someone who lives or cheers for Edmonton. Like, this is worse. They would lose the game 5-4 to in overtime. Connor McDavid, no, no, this is game four I'm thinking of. But anyway, I called it on the show. Nick Ehlers with the game-winning goal. A face-off snipe. It was awesome. And then we go to game four, triple OT. McDavid turns over the puck for the game winner. Kyle Connor and the Winnipeg Jets sweep the Edmonton Oilers. They're going home. I stayed up for that game. Oh, that was so tiring. It ended it like a little like before 2 a.m.? I, I stopped watching after the first overtime. I'm like, I, I can't do this. I can't. It's terrible. I love, you know, the Bugs Bunny memes. And it's like, I wish all sleep deprived Jets fans a very good day. <laughs> I was tired. I'm not even a Jets fan. And I stayed up. Jesse Pollock's, um I can't watch them. Like I, I, I watched, I mean, I can, but I always mute them. You have to, you just see his speech and you're like, I think we're going to lower the volume. <laughs> and as you listen, you have to steadily put it up a level at a time to be like, okay, where can I listen to this? 
Oh, Edmonton. Oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. Here's what I will say. I will never give Edmonton a single ounce of credit anymore because I did remember at the beginning of the season, my thing was, okay, they'll make the playoffs. They probably won't do much. Their defense isn't great. And they have Mike Smith. And I say, you know what? At the end of the season, I say, I'll give them some credit. You know, they had a good regular season. They came in second. I am never doing that again. I'm done. I'm done with giving them credit. I'm done. It's over. Well, I mean, you had the you had the Oilers winning, right? In seven. Daniel, what did you have in the series? I had the Jets, I believe, in seven. So I thought it was like again. I thought it was going to be a close series. Mm-hmm. So, if you'd allow me to for a second here, guys, go ahead. I said before this series. Yeah. I had the Jets in six, by the way. So this is just even better. Yeah. <laughs> I. Oh, this is just the best thing that's ever happened. McDavid, I think, in that last game, too, had three assists, or even he might have had three assists in, in the elimination game and in game three. Now, I was terrified. I think he scored, actually. I was terrified that my take was just going out the window. But it stood the test of time because this is not basketball. Mason Appleton had a massive goal in that comeback game, too. That's the difference between Edmonton and Winnipeg. Correct. And again, you had Ehlers coming back, so the top six was solidified. Sifley had a massive game. And the depths came through. And it just was nowhere to be found. And you can also see on the defensive side of it where there was no depth either because Nurse played 60 minutes. Can we talk about that it took three overtimes to do that? It took five overtimes for Seth Jones to hit that mark. That talks about the reliance Edmonton had to have on him. Their third pairing didn't see the ice basically in game three, past 10 minutes into the third. That's embarrassing. That's, there were, they were non-options. That's how bad it was. And may we never forget at the deadline, what did Ken Holland say? You can't go in every year. And McDavid proceeded to have 100 points plus. And he did nothing for him. Have no. you heard the quotes? I haven't actually seen any of Ken Holland's presser me, today, Alex. So please it. enlighten me. It was not great. Now let me go to Mark Spector because I know he has them. Oh, it, why is, okay, yeah, yeah. It was not good. Like, it's this is the first one I saw today as I'm eating lunch, scrolling like scrolling through my phone. Mm-hmm. We got beat by a real team. Winnipeg is an established program with really good players, really good depth. We're trying to grow into one of those really good hockey programs. Okay. They didn't have any defense. How do you say that? I I mean, again, like we talk about like, yeah, the core is pretty young, but I mean, for how long you've had all of them, like, Now it's another thing to say, like, oh, we still need to grow into a winner. Like they they have, like, you know, they have got like Bouchard, Yamamoto, still young, but it's sure Philip Roberg. There there is a there is a sort of drop off right now. And I love how they're pumping the tires of their AHL team right now, even though they're the only division playing playoff games right now in the AHL. Like, what are we doing here? What's the plan? Raphael Lavoie. Rafael, I mean, they can't be a good player, but Ryan McLeod. Me, it, it's he's going to be a good player. That's the issue. He's going to be. They need someone now. Like, you know what's funny? I have a they, fun fact. They need just what they need yeah, depth, yeah. and they need someone who can play defense. Which was my entire point about why Tyson Berry was a good signing, but the wrong player. Mm-hmm. He was good if they got you know a two way. Solid defensive guy, or Oscar Clefbaum didn't get injured. You know what I'm talking about? Like he's a complimentary, like, power play specialist. He's the cookie man. He's the cookie monster. And his cookies are the power play. It's like he's Justin Schultz on a good defensive core. <laughs> so Justin Schultz when he was a penguin? Yeah, like, that's what I think. That's the perfect Tyson Berry he role, was not Tyson a top Barry four. Tyson Berry when he was on Colorado. <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah. Um, the fun fact I have is when they talk about 
you know, they want to keep growing, their second round pick is still going to Detroit. <gasps> for Andreas oh, God. That's why. <laughs> that's why Ken Holland didn't do anything. Yeah, that's why we can't go in over here because I already went in last year when we were clearly not good enough. What is going on? I, I, I love it. And I'll, I'll, I'll say it here. Nathan McKinnon would never allow his team to get swept. Never. Would never happen. I, I saw the comments on that uh, our TikTok where guys like, what are you saying? They play on he plays on a line with Miko Rantanen and uh, Gabriel Landeskog. So I don't have TikTok, so I haven't seen the comments. Don't tell me people were saying that. Yeah, people were saying that. Yeah, the Oilers saying that. lost when they stapled Leon and Connor together. If you want, whatever. I mean, that, that's listen. If you listen to these last few episodes, I think I was being serious and saying that that McKinnon is better. When if you watch the video portion, I have to cover myself because I'm laughing every time I make a joke. Then get real. I like you. But well, honestly, you actually can't deny that he is the best player in the world right now because McDavid's not playing hockey anymore. Correct. And oh, he's going I, to be gone. Adam should be a lawyer. It's. <laughs> I. You're not the first person to say that to me. It's mostly my do parents it, when I'm arguing it. with them, but. Do it. Do it. Anyway, no. Be the next legal Gary Batman. We need legal counsel. I could not. I'm not smart enough, and I I like having some morsel of a personality. <laughs> I could never be a lawyer. I talk too much. Anyway. Um. Any yeah. Anything on that? Business. Yeah. One other thing that Ken Holland said today, and I just yeah. want you to take a guess at uh, which player he's talking about. He said. Okay. Someone asked him, "Is a bio?" going to be part of Ken Holland's summer strategy. Uh, his response was very possible. Very possible. Cassian? Cassian. Uh, okay. Daniel. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, oh, I just looked at that deal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. What, wait, wait, wait. What, what's the deal? Remind the, remind the listeners. It's three, pretty bad. 3.2 for oh. the next three years. I was thinking Nico Koskinen. So was I. Oh, that's another bad one. No. <laughs> also, uh, they want to resign. They want to resign Mike Smith. So yeah, I saw that. I'm if like... it's Miko Koskin and Mike Smith, man, uh, if you have Smith as a back back backup, I don't think it's terrible the way he played. No, it's not. Um, he's. I think he's earned another contract, but it's just. Yeah. He's thirty nine. Like again, we talked about it this season. That's great. Your future plans cannot be relying on a thirty nine year old goaltender. Do That's not have, how this works. I don't even know. Like, do they have any other goalies? Um, Stuart Skinner. He was a third round pick Stuart two years ago. Skinner. He did play because they kind of had had and to make him was, play. And he was not good. Uh, I remember him playing this year. It was not an amazing viewing party. You know who they really could have used at 14th overall this year? Who? Yaroslav Askarov if he didn't go uh, to Nashville. No. Oh, but we would he'd be here or be in Russia? He'd be in Russia. Yeah, no, he would be, yeah. No, he would be. Um, in the wake of this, the, the timing is horrible here. Um, Wayne Gretzky had left the organization. <laughs> yeah. So it's because he's going to TNT, and apparently he's making $3 million a year, which is like, whatever. Attaboy, Wayne. Um, I, whatever he's doing right now. Though, Does he need I, more money? I, I, here's the thing. Remember when he was coaching Arizona? Yeah. He didn't leave because it's like, um, like he was protecting his reputation. I think that was it. At the end of the day, it helps Wayne Gretzky's brand that he will now be part of one of the big front runners in the U.S. developmental. Day. I don't think Wayne Gretzky's going to be an amazing analyst. He just doesn't have the. I don't want to disrespect the best player to ever play the game after Peter Forsberg, but <laughs> um, Wayne Gretzky's not the biggest personality like regardless of whether this is because he is embarrassed that the Oilers just lost to a sweep to the Jets it it is without a question a terrible look that days after you lose in the first round after McDavid is the best season since like Gretzky played that he that he leaves your organization regardless if it's for TNT or whatever it looks god awful for them. Yeah, it was an odd way, an odd series of events because he said he was leaving 
And then a couple out, like, it's like, okay, well, there's two hours. Let's just speculate, because I guess that's what Twitter's for. So you <laughs> waited for the official announcement with them. Or at the least ne- a- yeah. Yeah. You just said, guys, and you can set the TNT, because it's Jeez. preferred to give him $3 million a year. He, and it's Ryan Gretzky. He could have had the zest to be like, can we hold off here? Daniel, what were you going to say there? I, just I thought it was a joke, because um, I, at first I actually thought it was like, a, a joke because when um Wayne Gretzky did the quote of you miss 100% of the shots you don't take and I know he I know what he's doing I know what he's doing yeah. but when I first saw that I thought it was a fake Wayne Gretzky account and then when I checked it I'm like no he actually tweeted that out <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man the Oilers he missed oh, a well. crucial part of it though what he didn't add Michael Scott at the bottom he did not. Oh. That's um. He's stealing another man's clothes. All right. So for you guys, what was the worst? What was worse for timing? The Rangers firings or this? Uh the Rangers. The Rangers. Yeah. 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 yeah I thought was, the same thing. Because that was actual hockey ops people. This is like reputation wise, it's hilarious to see Wayne Gretzky leave. The Rangers, Tom Wilson, burnt the organization to the ground. <laughs> Literally. That's much worse. I kind of forgot (laughs) that Wayne Gretzky was a part of the organization. Same. Because it's like, he doesn't, like, not that he doesn't do anything. I bet he's a great voice to have in there because it's Wayne Gretzky. But it's like, I rarely hear from him. and I don't really know what he does. Was it Keith that was the interim GM? I think he's still the AGM, right? He's, uh, yeah, AGM, yeah. Too much, if he leaves now. That'd be even funnier. I love that. I love the Oilers. I love them so much for all the wrong reasons. Um, I think we we should, when we have the time here, also acknowledge that um, all the stuff that's been going on with Ethan Bear and yes. sort of racist comments being made against him uh, is disgusting. And there's no play. Like, it's so difficult to actually say that hockey is for everyone because, man, it feels like there's an incident. And we're, we're waiting. Like, I don't want people to think we're ignoring this. We're waiting till after Thursday to talk about Ron McLean. We are going to address it, but he had a statement. Sports had the statement, but we want to wait until his first broadcast back before we cover that. But it is very difficult when it feels like every other week there is some incident that makes you think, God, this lake sometimes of this. And, and it's not the league itself in this scenario, but it is still like the fans around it. There's just, Still this stench around hockey sometimes where it's like, God, it doesn't feel inclusive. And it's such a damn shame. Yeah. Shout out to Ethan Bear, though. I don't know if you guys saw it. It came out at 645. Um, Just after we started recording, he threw the Oilers um, Twitter. I'm assuming it's on Instagram as well, but giving a statement about the comments. So Mm -hmm. that, that does take a lot. Uh, so shout out to him. I, I I feel for the guy. I know that he's been someone too that's been really involved with making sure that there's a lot more of um in, of an indigenous like influence in the NHL. That he's been part of so many committees and so many um efforts for that. And it's disappointing. Like we always forget. Like this guy's only twenty three. That. He, for what we talk about the Oilers, like he gave it his all. Like it's not his fault they lost, and to just like single him out like that is just another another like horrible thing to look at. That again, when we always talk about that, you know, the NHL is kind of playing a bit of a passive role with everything that's going on. It's 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 alarming to me. It's alarming that that you know there's nothing really substantial to kind of address it in a way i think like i like that the oilers have have kind of gone on their own and to do this but it's just it's a disappointing thing 